In the previous video, we have talked about the 5 layers model and covered the first 3 layers. In this video, we shall talk about the remaining 2. We finished the last video with the third layer and said that it is responsible for routing. The fourth layer uses the third layer in order to send packets over the network. The fourth layer, called the transportation layer, is an end-to-end -end layer, that is, it is responsible for communication from the source to the ultimate destination. It allows multiplexing. For example, one server may serve as a web server as well as a mail server. When a client turns to that server, it should be able to specify which service it would like to access. While the third layer specifies the address of the server, the transport layer identifies which service is relevant for the current communication. In addition, the transport layer may ensure reliability. So when this layer receives data from the upper layer, it splits it into chunks, sends them, and makes sure that all those chunks arrive correctly at the other end. We must remember that the network layer is usually not reliable. Packets may arrive in incorrect order, they can arrive with incorrect data or even not arrive at all. A reliable transportation layer makes sure that the data is correctly received. In this layer, Datagrams are called segments. Let's look again at the following network diagram. Which layer is responsible for what? We've already said that the network layer is responsible for the route, that is, the path in which the packet travels. We also mentioned that the second layer is responsible for the transmission of the data between two directly connected devices. For example, this link here, or this link. The fourth layer views all of this network diagram as an abstract cloud. It doesn't know the routers and it doesn't care about the structure of the network or the routing. It assumes that the network can send a packet from one end to another. The transportation layer makes sure that the endpoints can communicate over different services, for example, web and email. In addition, it might make sure that the connection is reliable. One example would be to acknowledge every received segment. For instance, when computer A sends a segment to computer B, computer B will send a special acknowledgement segment announcing that it has received the packet. We'll describe methods for implementing a reliable connection in future videos. Last but definitely not least, we have the fifth application layer. This layer provides the service to the user's application, web service, voice over IP, network games, streaming, etc. According to the layers model, the fifth layer doesn't care at all about the network. It relies on the fourth layer as well as the lower layers to transmit the data from one endpoint to another. The fifth layer will use this service for the various needs of the application. Different protocols will be used for different applications. For instance, HTTP is highly used for sending web pages on the World Wide Web. SMTP is a protocol used for emails, FTP for exchanging files, and there are many, many more. Now that we have covered the five layers, let's have one example using all of them together. Let's say we'd like to send a video file to our friend who lives in France while we are enjoying a trip in Argentina. For that, we're using an email service. The fifth layer defines how the email will be transmitted. For example, it includes the email address of the sender as well as the receiver. It, contain, it contains a title, a body of the message, it requires that we follow a specific template of an email address. Then, the fifth layer uses the fourth layer in order to split the email into chunks. It is also used in order to specify that we are currently using an email service. In this case, we definitely want the connection to be reliable, so the receiver will be able to play our video file correctly. Thus, the fourth layer will also handle reliability. On the receiver's end, it might send acknowledgement packets for every packet it receives. The third layer will define the best route for every packet to be sent. It might choose different routes for different packets. The second layer will be responsible for every link between two directly connected devices. For example, this link here might be Wi-Fi, while this link might use an Ethernet cable. The first layer is responsible for encoding all the ones and zeros and path them over the line. This way, every layer uses the services provided by the lower layers and the huge problem of transmitting data over the network becomes doable. How amazing is that? In the next short video we'll cover one more specific detail about the layers, 
After that, we'll get to know our first actual tool, which we'll use along this course.